Hey everyone, welcome back to the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron's Level 2 Cruising Course, Module 4. Uh, so here we're looking at collision avoidance. How can we use the rules to make sure that we don't get into trouble with other boats? Really important section. Um, we'll go through it and try and make things as simple as possible. So Module 4, Collision Avoidance. To help us avoid collisions, there are some sound signals that can help us. The sound signals are blasts of a horn. One blast of a horn means that the vessel is turning to starboard. Two blasts is I'm turning to port. Three blasts, uh, I'm operating in reverse. Doesn't necessarily mean we're going backwards, um, but probably will end up going backwards shortly but they've just shifted into reverse so they're really slowing down and you hear that quite a lot in the port because generally the ferries um, will reverse off the dock so they'll often blow their horn three times as they leave the ferry terminal five blasts on the horn officially what that means is what are your intentions now this is a situation where We've got a vessel and it doesn't understand what the boats around it are doing. And what it actually means is, is that five blasts of the horn is a desperate attempt to get you to go away and do that quite quickly. You know, this is someone that's trying to avoid a collision. It may be a big ship that's not able to uh, change course, not able to slow down, might be restricted in a channel and they're blasting their horn five times because they really don't want to run you over but they just aren't able to stop and avoid the collision. So you must move away really quickly if you hear a vessel blast five times at you. It could be that you could return with one blast, I'm turning to starboard just a signal to them your intention of how you're going to move away from them. Now, if you hear four blasts, uh, that's the pilot vessel. I've never heard it. Normally they're quite um, distinct with their white and red light on their mast, grey hair, red face. If they want to identify themselves using a sound signal, four blasts is what you'll hear. Now, when we're sailing, we have a port side and a starboard side. Here, the wind traveling over the right-hand side of the boat, the starboard side of the boat, would indicate that that boat is on the starboard tack. Wind coming over the left-hand side of the boat, the port side, is on port tack. And the starboard boat has right of way if you like. Right of way is not a term that we like to use in, the, in maritime. Um, doesn't really exist. The term really is stand on. So stand on means that you must maintain your course and your speed and not deviate from that and give the other vessel the opportunity to avoid the collision. So if the boat that's on port tack continues there will be a collision and the onus is on that vessel to do one of two things. Bear away and come round behind the vessel that's on starboard or tack and go in the same direction as the boat that's on starboard. If the vessel that's on port does not give way, then the stand-on vessel should give way. So the number one rule in sailing is avoid a collision. You cannot end up in court saying, well, I was on starboard, so I kept on going straight, and the other boat should have tacked. That's not a defence. You must avoid a collision. If you're, on, you're the stand-on vessel, your duty is to maintain your speed and your course and observe the other boat. If they do not take action to avoid the collision, then the stand-on vessel will avoid the collision. If you have a horn, as you're approaching, you're observing, they don't appear to make any decision to avoid the collision, 
but you're the stand on vessel. Five blasts of a horn if they don't do anything. One blast and then you tack and you turn to starboard to avoid the collision. So if we're going in the same direction as the, the, uh, the boat, so if we look at the boats on the left, we have one that's windward. They can't turn downwind onto the boat that's underneath them. They have to maintain their course. And on the other pair, on the right hand side, we've got a vessel sailing upwind and a vessel sailing downwind. Now, if they're on the same tack, the sails on the same side of the boat, which they are in this case, they're both on um, starboard tack, the wind is coming over the starboard side. Then we have a windward leeward situation and the windward boat, the boat that's upwind, needs to give way. I would be particularly cautious in this instance with the boat that's travelling upwind because the boat travelling downwind may struggle to avoid a collision, particularly if they've got a big downwind sail. So, windward boat gives way to the leeward boat. Here we have a situation with, between two power boats and we've got the lights there so it could be a situation that's happening at night and if we view port and starboard lights just like traffic lights if we're seeing a green light then that's green for go the other vessel is seeing our port light and that's stop or avoid us so we can observe them and if they don't make a change of course, then again, we'll have to change our course. But let's give them the opportunity to do so. And we give way to vessels that are approaching us from our right. So here we have a situation where we've got one sailing boat that wants to overtake another sailing boat. Either side is okay under the law to pass on. No sailor would go on the leeward side. We'd really always want to be passing on the windward side of the boat because that's we're going to have more speed on that side, more power, and we're going to slow the other boat down. So the overtaking boat gives way. Now if a sailing boat is overtaking a power boat, same thing. The overtaking boat must give way. Power does not give way to sail in this instance. And in fact, during the America's Cup, American Magic sailing the uh, America's Cup boat into the uh, harbour, and they were overtaking a ferry, and American Magic just got way too close. Um, and the harbour master decided that American Magic were overtaking, and therefore should have given way to the ferry and they were deemed that they didn't give way and they were actually given a fine for that. I don't think the fine was that much. I don't think it affected their America's Cup campaign. But sail does give way to power if a sailing boat is overtaking. And that might be a situation that uh, comes up more often now we're foiling. So here we have a, a vessel which is over 500 tonnes. Now, the insert from the chart is uh, from North Head, and that indicates the port and starboard marks on the channel, which the large ships need to stay in. The channel there is a dredge channel, which, which is deep enough for those boats to come in and out. If we're in that channel, it's perfectly fine for us to be in there, but we have to give way to those ships and simply those boats that are over 500 tons if we get really close they just can't see us you know they've got all those shipping containers in the way so we need to stay 500 meters that's half a kilometer off the bow and 200 meters away from either side or the stern they simply cannot see us if we get closer than that they also can't stop. 
and they go deceptively fast. So if we see a big ship in the distance, because it's such a big thing, it's quite majestic, it moves very gracefully, its speed is often um, underestimated and it will go from a speck in the distance to being right on top of us really quickly. If you see one, move out of the channel, it will be staying in the channel because that's where it has to be because that's where the deep water is. But because of the weight of the vessel, because of its momentum, if they shifted into reverse and went full power in reverse, it would probably take them a mile to stop. They've also got a very small rudder compared to the size of the ship, so they're not very manoeuvrable. They can't do a 360. You know, they are very slow to turn, they're very slow to accelerate, they're very slow to stop. But once they get going, they go quite fast. So we need to keep clear of them in the channel. We shouldn't um, anchor in the channel and we shouldn't just be messing around in the channel. You Sometimes you see little aluminium boats tied up to the channel markers um, fishing. You know, we're not really supposed to do that. Um, we do need to give a lot of respect to the give way rules. We may be out racing and think that we're protected under the racing rules but people that go racing will find that maritime law is what applies racing rules only applies to boats that are racing if there is a collision between boats that are racing well maritime law will be the one that gets applied and they may be surprised at who's at fault of that collision um, power gives way to sailing boats most of the time. There are some instances when the sailing boat has to give way. So when the boat is very big, over 500 tonnes, we need to keep well clear of it. When we're overtaking, or if it's fishing, or trawling, or if it's restricted in its ability to manoeuvre, we need to keep clear of power boats. Okay, well done for making it to the end of module four. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday evening where we plan our trip. We'll actually get the weather forecast for Friday evening. We'll look at our paper charts. We'll plan our course, draw paper, you know, draw lines on the paper charts, figure out how long it's gonna take us and what it's gonna be like, what the conditions are gonna be like. And that's crucial really for happy family sailing. You know, if we've got non-sailing members of our family a partner maybe if we want them to go sailing with us again it's really important that we plan and think about the conditions that it's going to be like for them so look forward to seeing you tuesday evening